Well, we definitely could talk more about turkey hunting here on the show, but why would we when the fishing opener is is as close as it is? And honestly, 99% of the people watching or listening to this are probably rigging up their rods right now in anticipation. I'm planning to be up in Ottertail County for the governor's fishing opener this year. And Eric Osberg from Ottertail Lakes Country is going to join us to talk about what I can expect when I hit the water up there. I don't know where I'm going yet, Eric, but you can, you're guaranteeing me a limit of walleyes, right? I did not guarantee you a what? limit of walleye. That was that was misunderstood. That was, that was a miscommunication on on Dan's part, probably. That's not, that's not my bad. bad. It's usually Dan's <laughs> fault, for sure. Right. Right. Yeah, let's just blame Dan. Um, you can never so, you can so, never guarantee Brett a limit of anything or one of anything. Let's be real here. Hey, so let's put the blame on Brett on this one. I can mute you. You know. <laughs> ah, the power of the guy <laughs> with the controls. Yeah, no, he's actually, Dan's absolutely right. There's no, and there's no guarantees in fishing anyway, no matter what, where you're going, what you're using, there's never a guarantee of limits. Even, you know, that's the thing. This is a discussion for another day, but people think when they hire a guy, they're guaranteed a limit. And that's not a guarantee as well. But Eric, how do you think things are going to look for the opener this year? Well, and, and I know what I'm going to do, okay? I, and so I'm not saying this is the right thing to do, but this is going to be my approach to the opener. And I, I, I as you know, or may, may or may not know, I love pulling crankbaits. I love stick baits. I love crankbaits. I love a, a jig and a minnow as effective as that can be just doesn't always do that for me. And so last year on the opener, uh, I went out at midnight, and I started, you know, with a jig and a minnow, and there weren't any fish underneath me. And so I'm like, well, I got to find, you know, before I can catch these things, I got to find them first. So I I don't know if, if anybody else does it, but I'm like, I'm going to start pulling cranks. That picture right there, Willie caught that walleye on a crankbait on the eve, of, you know, not the eve, but opener night. Um, in, it was in like uh, eight feet of water. And, 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 you know, that, that spot that I would, that we caught that fish in, we would normally run a jig and a minnow. And I decided, you know what, I need to cover water. So I, I pulled crankbaits. I, I'm a big fan of flicker shads. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I just really like flicker shads. Um, so a number seven or a number five flicker shad. And just, just think of the amount of water you can cover pulling a crankbait at two miles an hour versus vertical jigging. Or, or even drift jigging or snap jigging. So I guess that the advice would be somehow, some way, cover water. Uh, if, you, if you know the lake that you're going to and you know where the fish should be, obviously you, you can start there and you can have a slow presentation. But don't be afraid just because it's early in the season, those, those fish will chase a bait. I mean, they'll, they, you know, big bait catches big fish and, and, and big bait catches aggressive fish. And that's really what you're looking for. You don't want lethargic walleyes you're looking for feeding hungry walleyes um and the other so whether so if, if you're not into if you're not into throwing a, or trolling what i so here's what i would recommend for you Brent. right you're coming up to Ottertail county i would recommend a a uh a, an x wrap or a husky jerk right and it's it's not deep diving and and you you can like you're bass fishing you're just you're casting towards shore. You could be off the break. You could be on the break. You know, you could be in four to ten feet of water. I know that's a long, you know, that's a big window, but you're casting up shallow, and and you're and you're working that that husky jerk or that stick bait back to the boat. You know, a jerk and a pause, a jerk and a pause. The boy and I out, we were out last year, um, and it was right about that time of year, the middle of May. And we were we were targeting smallmouth bass, and so we were throwing these stick baits, you know, jerk and pause, jerk and pause, jerk and pause. Yeah, like a number seven or a number or a number ten, even. I mean, you can get a you can get a nice big husky jerk. Um, some of my favorite colors are like a gold and a golden black or a golden blue. Um, and and you get to cover water that way. And the cool thing is, is when those fish hit. They hit hard. They smack that bait, and then um, and then it's kind of game on. 
So this year, the opener is on the 15th. We had an early ice out. Normally, we'd be talking about our fish post-spawn, uh, what's the water temperature, what's going on. You got to think, I mean, got to think they're post-spawn at this point or, or near the end of it. I haven't heard much about where walleyes are at right now. What do you think's going on with them? Well, I do know this. The, the, the DNR in Ottertail County, anyways, they wrapped up their, they were able to do their egg stripping mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. Last year, they, they weren't allowed to do it or couldn't do it. But um, last week, so last week is when they wrapped up their, their egg, you know, I don't know, gathering or whatever you call it, right? So, so the, we're post spawn, right? They're, they're the, you know, water temps. It's weird though. It's been, and I've heard this from a lot of guys. You, you know, water temps are in the low to mid fifties right now. I was out last night, and normally you'd start to see some crappies in the shallow, but I we were I, the last two times I've been out looking, I have not seen a single crappie. You know, visually, um, I did get a report from a buddy. He, he got a bunch of crappies in that six to eight foot range, hmm. right? Um, but but they're they're you know so as far as the crappies bluegills those types of things they're 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 pre-spawn they're they're not there yet i don't believe um but the walleyes and the pike they're they're in post-spawn mode but again what whether you're fishing deep whether you're fishing shallow the the I, my approach is try to locate a fish right and the best way you can locate a fish is to move quickly cover water quickly and uh, but yeah, so water temps are are I guess what I would call normal for this time of year. The weather hasn't really made up its mind. You know, it's hot and then it's cold and then it's hot and then cold. But um, so yeah, so I'm gonna be out at midnight and I'm gonna be pulling cranks. That's what I'm gonna do. I saw that Randon had a pretty nice crappie yesterday. It looked like. Yeah, he's, um, and I think he's. And I talked with him the other, you know yesterday before he went out i was going to i was going to uh rush lake uh, i don't i don't know where he went but he wasn't with us on rush lake and again he's focusing right now on that that six to eight foot range right like they're they're not up in they're not up the crappies anyways aren't up in anything yet they're just kind of maybe they're staging maybe they're just right off of that but uh it uh yeah. If, so if you really want to know how to catch them, call Rand. Call Rand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that you were out. I saw that the otter was out with, uh, oh, yeah, here's Randon's wallet. Before we talk about what the otter was doing, yeah, that's a nice one. Randon with Lockjaw. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a pig. Uh, so I saw uh, the otter with Nicole Jacobs uh, yep. in Ottertail County last night. Have you ever met Nicole? I have met Nicole, yeah. She's awesome. Like what a, what a, what an ambassador for the sport. Right. Um, yeah. And I, 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 I had, I had visited with her, you know, via, you know, Instagram direct message, whatever, and stuff like that. But it was, we had a, a the inner otter and her had, I, I get, I get confused. Is it me or is it the, we all, we, all three of us had a good ah, time. She, there, okay. You were with too. I didn't realize. I was, I was, I was running the boat. The otter was you know, there too. Um, but uh, we don't want to no, let we don't want to let people peek behind the curtain, Eric. No, you don't want to break that wall. That's right. Um, the uh, <laughs> the uh, she and she and and what's cool about Nicole is she has a history in Ottertail County. She as a as a kid, she came up and she, you know her her family had a cabin on Rush Lake, and so she this was her first time back in a while, and so we checked all of the the, the normal spots that we could for crappies. We we caught some accidental pike. We didn't we didn't find the mother load of crappies, but Nicole's a good stick, and she's a she's a bass head at heart. And so um, and I I'm I kind of grew up bass fishing. So anytime you can spend time in the boat with somebody that uh, can appreciate the the awesome enough awesomeness of largemouth or smallmouth bass, especially in the middle of walleye world, it uh, it's it's a good time in the boat. And so she's actually with Randon today. Hmm. So. Um, we'll, we'll see how their adventure plays out. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, 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 and I guess what I would say about Nicole being here is, um, she, she was really excited to be a part of this governor's fishing opener because she has that history in Ottertail County. Uh, and she, she has a tournament coming up. She's a tournament angler. So she has a tournament opening weekend, 
and and we're like, well, we don't want to let that stand in the way of you participating. So we're like, why don't you come before the opener? Right? Uh. We, we can go. We can go. We can go pan fishing. So um, she 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 was able to make it work before the opener, and and she stayed at uh, Blade Owl Beach Resort on Rush Lake, and I guess. Th- and you and I have already talked about this a bunch on the program, but w- one of the things that I'm excited about, about the 2021 Minnesota governor's fishing opener is right now we've got people uh, registered to stay at 30 different resorts. Wow. And, and while that might not shine a huge spotlight on each of those resorts, at least dozens of resorts are feeling like they're they're getting some benefit out of the weekend right they're sure. they're having somebody stay there number one they're having somebody talk about them uh whether they're a social influencer or whether they're traditional media or whatever it is so so while the spotlight might not be super bright on that one spot it's it's a nice wide you know a wide spotlight so i, I you know I'm just, I'm glad she was able to come up and I'm glad she was able to stay at Blade Owl. Um, there's another resort on, uh, <clears throat> on Rush Lake called uh, Shady Grove. Some, you know, so somebody's going to be staying there. Somebody's going to be staying at 30 different resorts. And that's, that's why we do this thing is to, is to help those businesses and get the word out. Well, it's almost here, Eric. It's going to be here before you know it. And uh, in about a week and a half, you're going to be kicking back with a big beer, relaxing finally. Uh, after, I mean, because you start planning for these things, what, two to three years in advance, right? So this is like a four to five year process that's finally going to culminate on um, on May 15, May 16 weekend. Yeah, we, we threw our hat in the ring for the 2019 opener. So we, we submitted a, a proposal in 28, you know, so 2018 to 2019, 2019 to 2020. 20, yeah, it's been... It's been a long road, and I, I, on our com- we have a lead committee, right? And we've been meeting at least once a month for years, and and now you know now we're at every week level. And today, when I sent out the agenda, this it was the second to the last meeting. <laughs> right? Like we're we're almost there. See the like, like we're gonna do this one more time, and then to your point, we're gonna be able to kick back and and. Uh, I, w- I want to find some good cigars that I can uh, give everybody. Here's a here's a cigar, and uh, let's all celebrate. I, and I I guess what I would say is, so many people have stepped up. You know, there's my my coworkers, the, the 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 committees that we have together. I mean, dozens of people have put in hundreds of hours, even more than that. Um, businesses have stepped up to support this. Lund Boats, Shoremaster, Thumper Pond. Uh, it, it, you know, lakes area docks and lifts. I mean, there, the list goes on and on. There's, there, you know, a lot of people have stepped up to show support for this event, and we're just so grateful and appreciative of their of their hard work and their support. Well, it is a lot of work to do it, and I'm signed up. I think for the Lund Boats tour, and then uh, for Panfish Paradise after that on Friday, Eric. So I'll plan on uh, <laughs> seeing you around there somewhere. I'm sure on Friday. Yeah, and I, I hopefully hopefully we can stay, save a spot for you in Randon's boat because, like I said, he's uh, he's one of the he's one of the guys that's helping out on Friday and Saturday. So um, so yeah, bring your boat because then you can go find your own inner otter on Saturday. But uh, yep, we'll get right. you on some fish one. We'll get you on some fish one way or another. Very good. Well, Eric, uh, I wish you luck. And you know, normally I would say these walleye openers they tend to turn into crappie fishing a lot of times. So if, if that's the case, great. But with it being a little bit later this year, I think it could be good. So I'm excited about it and uh, looking forward to seeing you up there next week. Can't wait to have you. Thanks for all your, uh, thanks for all your help. Eric Osberg, Otter Tail Lakes Country. Thanks for the time today on the show. Did you know there are more than 1,000 lakes in Otter Tail County? Yep, and I'm going to fish as many as I can. I'm an outdoorsy otter. Nothing beats a full day of fishing for me. The lakes of Ottertail County give me plenty of options to lower my boat and snag the perfect catch. Not an outdoorsy otter? No problem. Ottertail County has something for everyone. You just need to find your inner otter. Go to this site right here. To find your inner otter, go to ottertaillakescountry.com.